Remember. I am proud and honoured to address this chamber today as a member for the seat of North West. Although this is not my first time I have spoken in Parliament, having been the member for Mining and Pastoral in the 37th Parliament, I can assure you I consider the privilege to be an experience in both houses of Parliament. Mr Deputy Speaker, I have lived and worked in the North West for several years, although much of this time has been spent on a plane or a car travelling between towns in what is, by any standards, a vast electorate. The, the electorate of North West covers three regions, the Pilbara, Gascoigne and Murchison. It covers more than 400,000 square kilometres, spreading from Shark Bay in the Gascoigne up to Roeburn in the Pilbara, and east to the inland towns of Mekathau and Mount Magnet. Comprising of some 15 towns and communities, numerous parcel stations and 12 local governments, government authorities, the resident population of the electorate is approximately 16,000 people. However, if one to a factory in fly and fly out workers and those involved in seasonal employment, the figure swells by as much as 10,000. Major administration centres are Carnarvon, Exmouth and Caratha. The North West electorate is a resource, the, the resource heartland of our state and economic powerhouse of the nation. It is the colossus of commerce which includes oil and gas, fishing, horticulture, aquaculture, tourism, pastoral, the benefits of which make a massive contribution to state and national economies. Landmarks within, within the electorate include Woodside's joint venture project, which is an enormous northwest shelf project on the Burrup Peninsula, Exmouth Ningaloo's Reef, the tourist mecca of Coral Bay, the nationally acclaimed food bowl of Carnarvon, and as a point of interest, the largest monolith in Australia, Mount Augustus, bigger than Uralu. Much of the state's uranium deposits are located, or are located within or near the North West electorate, presenting an opportunity for a fiery debate, if nothing else. I have travelled the length and breadth of the electorate many times <coughs> over, discovering untouched remnants of the gold rush, the best seafood exports in the world, the sweetest bananas, the most significant sunsets and beaches imaginable, outback horse races that attract people across the country, dolphins that want to befriend you, sharks, whale sharks that amaze you, and rock art that will mesmerise you, and deep sea fishing that makes Perth catch look like bait. The people of the electorate are, diverse, are a diverse bunch and have come to be there by many and varied routes. The Gascoigne region has a very large percentage of steadfast residents. Many have been there for generations and have no intention, intentions of moving. Their kids and their grandkids grow up and stay put in the region to become the next generation of decision makers. Like most country folk, the North West residents accept the lack of government services rather than complain, but when pushed too far, you will hear them. The people are acclaimed for their easygoing nature and love the great outdoors. Carnarvon's Saturday morning's growers market is a meeting place where people can socialise while purchasing fresh produce or a morning coffee. In contrast, Karatha is a largely fly-in, fly-out town and has a high trans, uh, transit population. This presents many challenges, not the least of which we need to provide very costly facilities and services to a percentage of the population which makes little financial contribution in the way of council rates and uh, discretionary spending in the town. Karatha and Dampier are major, pop, uh, major population centres in our sorry, Karatha and Dampier are major population centres in our state's north. If you have lived in Karatha for more than three years, you are considered a local, a long-term resident. Although there are a small handful of residents that now have been in Karatha over 45 years, what change they must have witnessed in that time. The Murchison towns of Yalgu, Mount Magnet, Kew, and Mekathara consist of overwhelmingly long-term residents which make their living from mining and related services. The population of the electorate includes indigenous, indigenous uh, communities which, uh, and are fortunate to have the commitment of several leaders who are to be admired for their tenancy and vision. These elders are working hard to improve conditions on their own backyard, in their own backyards 
and quite a few of them are here today in Parliament doing exactly that, lobbying for better services for their community. Our aged care community in Carnarvon has suffered a severe blow following the closure of the town's only aged care facility, which was cruelly taken away by the Howard government. It was the only facility of its kind found between Geraldton and Port Hedland. This is a situation personally I find intolerable, and I shall continue my battle with governments, state and federal, to bring out a satisfactory resolution to what is now a crisis situation for the age. The electric values its senior residents. It is heartbreaking that in the 21st century old folk have to be dislodged from their accommodation and relocated hundreds of kilometres away from their family. Only the only acceptable uh, solution is one of which enables them to live out their days in familiar surroundings and close to friend, their, their loved ones. Backpackers add to the culture of pass, uh, by passing through and perhaps staying a while to work on plantations, in the fishing industry or mines. It is not unusual to hear a multitude of foreign languages in the pubs and cafes of our electorate. Pastoralists, fishermen, small, large business owners, operators and their families make up a balance of this wonderful, diverse group of people. I have a passion for the electorate as well as a dedication to ensure the region attracts and retains people. What we need are jobs, government services, recreation facilities and infrastructure. What we don't want is for families to be penalised for choosing to live in regional Western Australia. The Gascoigne region, which begins in the south at the World Heritage listed Shark Bay area, has a coastline larger than that of New South Wales and a World Heritage Drive that rivals the Great Ocean Drive in Victoria. Denham has almost everything in the town that size you could want, including new school, a new civil chain post, along with an $8 million World Heritage Discovery Centre where the history and attractions of the region are showcased. In 1616, Dutch skipper Dirk Hartog was the first European to set foot on WA soil and on the island which now bears his name. This fascinating piece of history has captured, is captured at the World Heritage Discovery Centre with a replica of the plate and Hartog nailed to the post upon arrival. arrival. The former Labor government delivered vital pieces of infrastructure to Denham. I said earlier, Denham has almost everything a town its size could want. However, there are still essential pieces of infrastructure required. Denham requires an urgent upgrade to marine infrastructure to cope uh, with increasing boating traffic and tourism. A jetty and a marina are minimum requirements to service this town's needs. The heart of the Gascoigne is undoubtedly Carnarvon. Forgive me if I uh, appear a bit biased, but this is my hometown after all. I have proudly stand here today and say that the former Labor government delivered vital infrastructure that prior governments have promised and failed and time and time again to deliver. For example, Labor delivered the essential Bibbawarra crossing. This crossing took 40 minutes off travel time from plantation, overs, plantation owners um, to get to the town centre and provided safe passage across the mighty Gascoigne River. It was a common event prior to building the, of the crossing for residents to be literally isolated from the rest of the world by flooding by flood which with no means of safe passage possible. Labor brought government services back into town. Labor upgraded the Carnarvon Hospital, stage one completed and stage two on the way. Labor upgraded the Carnarvon Senior High School, built a new wharf to support the fishing industry and completed the first and second stage land releases at North Water. Labor provided funding to repair the fire damage to the One Mile Jetty, the historic One Mile Jetty, and committed to a $38 million police station courthouse on a site that 87 per cent of the community wanted, a site known as a trader site. There are many more achievements, but I will not list them here all um, as there are too many to actually list. Is, and this is why Labor was returned in the North West with an increased majority. But there's always more to achieve. For a waterfront town, it's unbelievable that Carnarvon does not have a proper boat, boat ramp. One of the most exciting towns in my electorate has to be Exmouth. Exmouth is striving to reach a balance between tourism and industry. It has a superb tourism potential sitting alongside a rich, and rich oil and gas fields. Exmouth is slowly but, increasing its, but with increasing determination building its tourism product. It now boasts the world-class uh, Novotel Ningaloo Resort. Exmouth 
has already outgrown its marina, despite having only a few houses completed on some 400 lots that are avail available to be built on. Prior to election, I was chair of the community, of, uh, the community steering committee, which was tasked to review the need to expand the harbour and provide more boat pens to meet the needs of the growing tourism and oil and gas industries. The community wants this expansion to occur, as it will deliver year-round employment to support both industries of tourism and resources. One can only one can not not mention Exmouth without mentioning the amazing Ningaloo Reef and Cape Range Peninsula. The reef is 280 kilometres long, fringing a fringing coral reef skirting the Cape Range Peninsula, 1,200 kilometres north of Perth. The reef is the longest fringe, fringing coral reef in the world, and one that lasts at one of the last healthy majority coral reef systems in existence. If reports are true, 80 per cent of the world's coral reef, reefs are in serious decline due to human influence. So the isolated Ningaloo Reef is of particular international importance and interest. The Ningaloo Reef is an iconic feature of West Australia's natural environment. Public expressions of support and the realisation of the importance of the reef were brought to a head with, when the development of the Maud's Landing Resort was halted by public pressure in 2003. A rally against the resort attracted around 15,000 people in Fremantle, with simultaneous rallies held in Coral Bay and Exmouth. Beneath the Cape Range Peninsula lives an extraordinary collection of cave dwelling and aquatic animals found nowhere else in the world. Cape Range also harbours an ancient history of Aboriginal habitation, providing a fascinating story of life and culture of these first inhabitants, as well as unique human record of environmental environmental and biodiversity changes. The area is na uh, of national uh, archaeology and cultural, cultural significance as a unique recording, as the place, a, a unique place recording 30,000 years of habitation by coastal Aboriginal communities, their relationship to the reef and dependence on its resources. Its caves record the earliest evidence of ornamental use of marine shells. Obviously, all these facts are extremely interesting, but what we do with them now is as how to best appreciate them, study them and preserve them. That is the question. In recent years, intense interest in the area has prompted them to push to establish a Ningaloo Research Centre. The proposal is for a dedicated research centre based in Exmouth. Planning for the centre has, has progressed in recent years under the guidance of a steering committee and board representing government, university research and local interests, and chaired by the Honourable Ian Lawrence. It's interesting to note that the Great Barrier Reef actually has eight of these research stations, and Western Australia does not have one. Occasionally we will get a few dollars to send a ship around to actually look after the reef or monitor what has happened. And it's even more important when when oil and gas is situated some 24 kilometres off this natural wonder. <clears throat> this is only some of the opportunities that the region has. It is not possible to list all the projects here, but it's projects such as these that must be supported by government as they support an ultimate aim of ensuring jobs, services and facilities in the regions are plentiful and desirable enough to attract and retain families, ensuring a vibrant future for the area. The fortunes of, other, uh, of, of the towns of the Murchison are intrinsically different to the world markets, intrinsically linked to the world markets, I should say. Whether it's parcel industry in Yaogu and Kew or the mining activity in Mount Magna and Mekathara, as the price of gold goes up and down, so does the vibrancy of the towns. It is a common misconception that the mining industry has experienced a boom right across the board. This may be so in the Pilbara, but in places like Mount Magna and Mekathara, this is not the case. Mines have closed or are on the process of closure. Times are tough when the going is good, let alone when it isn't. Far too long this area has suffered declining services. For example, there has not been a permanent doctor in the Murchison towns for many years. The need to improve the Helson is my priority for the Murchison towns. Caratha is the largest town of both Pilbara of, of both the Pilbara and the electorate of North West. 
It is town often referred to as the engine room of this state's economy. Caratha has around 8,600 people on the electoral roll, but anecdotal evidence suggests that the real figure is probably closer to about 18,000 of uh, people living at any one time in Caratha. The Pilbara has many booms and many busts, but this one has been very different. Different because everyone has said, has been saying, "Oh, we've seen this one before. It will end," but it hasn't yet. The boom has uh, boom has continued for such a time that the town has clearly outgrown its infrastructure and put pressure on its services. We must catch up. Infrastructure and services growth must keep pace with the economic activity. Much has been done to ensure Caratha keeps pace with itself. For example, prior to 2001, under a coalition government, Caratha had no permanent doctors. But under the former Labor government, Caratha has now got 10 permanent doctors. This is a great start, but it's not enough to service the population adequately. The area's contribution to the state's economy must be recognised and subsequently reflected in regional investment. Much more is needed, both from the state government and the federal government. The list of requirements for this region, and just to roll off a few off the tongue, is a long list. Some of them are health, service, health services, doctors, specialists, PATS program improvements, mental health care, mammography unit, CT scanner, housing, small business support for accommodation and staff, recreational facilities for teenagers, childcare, shade sales for playgrounds, a marina for Dampion, a new school for Roadburn and a centenary park for Point Sands and the list goes on. The Shire Roadburn, with the support of the former state government, developed a 2020 project which, was conduct which conducted a survey of residents to find out what the town of Caratha needs to reflect the demographic that they have today. Recreation facilities for teenagers, more facilities for families, education facilities. Uh, Chair, can I please have some extra time? Extension granted. Um, well, more, more indoor facilities like a shopping mall with cafes have been some of the suggestions. Caratha needs a town centre that people can meet to socialise and to become a vibrant community in a major town centre that can rival Kalgoorlie. I urge the state and federal governments and companies like Rio and Woodside to contribute to what is a great vision for revitalising Caratha, a true royalties for regions, as this is a region producing the wealth. There has been much debate in recent, uh, recently on the issue of establishing a uranium industry in our state. I take the opportunity to urge further and formalise debate um, so it, it undertaken as a prior, prior to any action. This chamber and its members have a duty to represent the desires of people of Western Australia and it is our right responsibility to facilitate considered debate on this emotive subject. We must weigh up the facts to try and remove the spin from the arguments presented by people and its organisation with vested personal or professional interests. Uh, the suggestion that WA should take back the world's uranium waste is highly incendiary. The economy, the social and environmental, or the triple bottom line impact you know, of establishing uranium industry cannot be fully understood or appreciated without vigorous debate or public consultation. With this, no discussion can be had about industry and development with, without regard to the people who work and make it all happen. All employees must receive a fair go, fair pay, fair conditions, job, uh, job security and, safe, and safety must never be sacrificed in the name of profit. Protecting and supporting working people is the foundation of the Australian Labor Party. Central to this is the workers' right for safe working environment. The re-establishment of family, uh, family friendly working hours and the roster that have sustained a profitable mining industry for more than 100 years. Many people in the Pilbara have shared their concern with me about the encroachment of fly and fly out uh, uh, policy in our community. I support the concept of fly and fly out extent exclusion zones to ensure that our communities benefit from the resources in their own backyard. There must always be a balance between development of resources and the needs of regional communities. Although it may be called a secondary industry, to the resource industry. Tourism is vitally important to our state. It brings a vibrancy to otherwise dry and dusty mining towns that hold no attraction other than to make a good salary 
by working longer and harder days. Imagine a state without visitors, cafes, restaurants, resorts, entertainment facilities, marinas, discovery tours and adventures, adventure activities. That is a state without tourism. There is no question that our resource industry brings big bucks and offers employment and stability and profitability, but the two industries must work together to ensure we have the opportunities to play and enjoy alongside our hard working ethos. I call upon not only the government but also the Woodsides and the Rios and BHPs of our state to get behind tourism development. I call upon them to consider tourism opportunities alongside considerations for fly and fly out uh, transport needs, accommodation requirements, town developments, infrastructure projects and staffing requirements. Let's work together to ensure our state has a vibrant, exciting and attractive place to live and to holiday in. It is a fact of life that not all members of society share the benefits of our economic pr prosperity. Members we live in, in the 21st century, and even with the advancements in health, education, recreation and social infrastructure, some of our local communities have, have among the highest infant mortality rates in the world, and some of the people in our community are suffering from third world diseases. Tragically, many children are born with fetal alcohol syndrome and die from malnutrition. They have no chance of life, no opportunities to speak of. They have lost the game before, it, before conception. The life of these children face birth. Uh, life of these children face after birth is one of, too often, consists of routine of abuse and extreme hardship. Suicide rates are shocking, but not surprising, given the life of these children suffering through, as they move into the adult world. Families are being ripped apart by the scourge of that drug, alcohol, and solvent abuse, regardless of the current economic prosperity. No amount of physical fortitude can wipe away centuries of tears and lost fortunes and the decline of culture. However, our recognition of these facts it, uh, will assist the healing process with Indigenous communities. 2% of, uh, of Australia's population is Ab Aboriginal, yet shamefully, in my electorate, over 90% of the prison population is Aboriginal. Does this mean that Aboriginal people commit more crime? That's obvious. That may be the answer, but the question we should be asking is why. We need better me uh, mechanisms to cater for the needs of Western Australians, black or white, from the country to the city. All of these have been said before. I, don't want, I, I do not know the answers, but what I do know, to, we must find the answers and we must act now to change this dreadful and shameful situation. But what I, I can say is a bipartisan approach is needed to support policies which will last a generation in order to change a, genera change a generation from the problems they have. During the, the campaigns, we all have a lot of people that we need to thank, and uh, I'm no different. And I wish to thank those who have assisted me during the campaign, and particularly the Hardy, the Hardy family, uh, and particularly Debbie, John Little, and Paul Semple. Dave Shelton, Jenny Walsh, Linda Coniglio, James Lynn and Finn Donnelly, David Foltz, Cameron Smith, Stan uh, Kostinich, Len Padgey, Shane Almore, Carl Brandenburg, Kerry White, Fiona White Harty, Elaine Walsh, Macca from Shark Bay, Kelvin Matthews, John Kerry, Megan Amwell, Lynn Snook, Doug Hunt, Brad Snell, Des Wright, Patrick Baroni, Tony Shaw and unions, in particular the CFMEU and SDA. My greatest debt is to my family, my mother, mother Rita, who is here today, my father Nick, uh, who has also been a member of this place. And let me tell you, members, um, if anyone calls me Nick, I uh, automatically will assume that you'll make a donation to my campaign. So uh, be aware. Um, <laughs> my brothers Mark and Stephen, my sister Angela and brother Lord James, and to my extended family, the Ramsey family, in particular Leslie, thank you. My wife Joanna and son Nicholas, who are here today, who have hardly seen me over the last year, and, and Joanna would probably say, I haven't seen you probably over the last four years. Thank you very much. It can't be done without you. In conclusion, most people in the North West just want to get on with it. And while they do not expect city features like stadiums, trains, they know their rights and expect, and expect the basics like schools, hospitals, police, roads so they can get on with their productive lives. They do not look, forward, look for 
handouts and often have a tendency to take matters into their own hands if required. For this, they have my admiration and respect. Even without royalties to the regions, Labor spent a lot in the regions, and particularly in the North West, and the new government must continue this. Labor policy calls for the fair distribution of benefits of economic growth, continuous improvement in the welfare and living standards of the Australian people, and the relocation of resources to those most in need. We don't need a program labelled as royalties for regions, but to adhere to this policy. Thank you.